Hey everybody, Mr. Miller here, and I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to find and import a photo for your magazine cover. So we're going to locate an appropriate photo to use for that magazine cover using what else but the internet. So here we go. Um, in order to get this started, um, I am going to go ahead and go back to this um, page that I had on magazines.com. Um, just to recap, in my publishing document. I've already set it up with the appropriate um, half inch margin or border around it. I've already found the magazine cover that I want to make um, using this bass guitar magazine and I've got a um, I've got a picture here and a nice layout. So anyway I'm gonna go ahead and go to the internet to find a photo. Um, I've already taken a little bit of time for the purposes of this demonstration to do some searching but um, obviously it'll take you longer I'm going to go to Google, which is pretty normal place to start searching, and I'm going to go ahead and put a name in that I already have on my mind, the Steve Miller Band. And there it is. Go figure. Now, when I type that in, and then you can just, you know, obviously search for whatever you're looking for as far as, you know, an artist or a sports figure or whatever, I'm going to click on the Images button. And when I click on the images button, you see a whole list of images come up. But I want to get very specific with my image search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to more. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go to search tools. And under search tools, I'm going to go to size. And I'm going to make sure I type large. Or I click on large. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to show me larger, um, larger uh size photos in other words the resolution so like this one when I mouse over it's 2500 by 1667 the larger the numbers the better it is now I also want to find a photo that is uh, very much vertical in its orientation um, so in other words I want to make sure that it is um, up and down in other words portrait I don't want it horizontal like this one here or for this one here so um, this is a pretty nice one. I'm going to use this one for just example. I click on that one and it comes up with this image. Okay. Now notice that it says uh, 1418 by 2062. That's a pretty high resolution. So the higher the resolution the better. If you find a low resolution one, keep looking because if you don't have a high resolution one it is absolutely not going to look good for you. So I'm going to click on view image and there you see my image and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy that image and then once I've copied it I'm gonna go over to the Pro Mag cover that I've already created I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste and if I've done this correctly it should show up right there now it's really big on my screen so I'm gonna hold down control I'm gonna scroll back and you can see now it's much bigger than my actual size of my page so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag this down and resize it and notice I click the corner if I don't click the corner, I'm going to really smush it up like that. I don't want to do that. Control Z is your undo, or you can go to edit and undo. And that looks pretty good. Now, in order to set that up on my page, I go ahead and move it over there. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it up a little bit here. Actually, not trim it, resize it like so. Now, the only problem with this is this has a different resolution than... This, the width of my paper. Um, so if I want to cheat a little bit I could stretch them out a little bit that's not too bad or I can keep it back original and I can just kind of pretend that that doesn't exist on the end. I have some other ways to do that for instance if you want to fill in those areas I could create, I'm going to save this real quick, I could create a bar um, this is kind of a dark blue so if I if I create a rectangle over here I can click and just kind of create my rectangle on there and then I can go ahead and fill that in with a bluish color create no line color and then I can even um, right mouse click and send it to the background like so okay now I'd like to have that a little darker so I click on that again I go to fill effects or more fill colors rather under my paint bucket tool and then Let's make it really dark here so it'll blend in maybe a little better. Let's go even darker than that. Almost looking for like a blackish color, real midnight blue like that. 
Uh, it doesn't appear to be working very good. Let's move this over and try that again. Ah, there we go. I just didn't have it selected all the way. So now when I move this over, I can use my arrows to kind of nudge it around, and then that's looking a little bit better. Now, you might notice that it's got this this dotted line there. That's not an issue. If I actually go to View, and I go to, uh, let's see, what am I looking for here? Oh... Uh, Go to print preview. That's what I want. It's going to show me. So I went to file. Let me do that one more time for you. I go to file. I go to print preview. And it shows me what it's going to look like in a print preview. So that actually blends in pretty well. It's not bad. And I could do the same thing on the other side with more of a black one. So that's, that's not bad. So that's how we get our photo in to the document. Now in other videos I'm going to show you, and I'll save this up, how to actually work, uh, start working around and with the text there. So that's a good place to get you started.